Well, I told them the okay. hey. Easter basket. Hey, Izzy. Hello, hello, hello. I suppose we should get started. It's uh, welcome, everyone. Top of the hour. Yes, welcome to the October meeting of the uh, Concierge and Land User Group. Uh, we hope everyone's enjoying the Halloween season here in Second Life. We uh, are all dressed up in our finery up here. Um, and of course, there's a lot going on um, in the season here in Second Life. Uh, for one, and we just talked about bears in the Belisaria Lindenholm regions, you will find the return of our trick or treat event. Um, you don't have to have a Linden home to participate and collect candy and all of that and get Linden bears. Uh, you do need to have a Linden home if you're going to uh, put out a candy bucket. Those are limited to Belisaria landowners only. But anyone can get the bears by going door to door for the goods. That's right, Wendy. The haunted house neighborhood is also back this year in the Millbank region of Belisaria. So you want to grab one of those not suspicious red balloons, which are probably are a little suspicious in two of the neighborhood. Give it a good once over. The fun isn't limited to the Linden homes, however. You'll find a new premium gift for all of our premium and premium plus members. Fully furnished spooky cabin. And that's what I'm particularly excited about. I love houses. New last names were also released for Halloween. Demon Paws, Adams, Boo, Voorhees, Macab, and Bitey are all available for a limited time. When we say limited, we say these names will be removed at a specified date, which we don't know, but uh, they do are, well, they are rotated. So um, when you see names that pop up that you want, I'd say go for it. Um, because while we do rotate names in and out, we cannot guarantee that names will return. So um, definitely pounce on it if you see a name. Any questions so far? Of course, you'll also find the Halloween Shop and Hop running right now, as he mentioned it earlier. It goes through uh, November 1st. There's over 320 stores this time. Uh, each of them also has a free gift, and there's loads of discounted stuff as well. Um, for slurls and information on all of these, uh, including the Halloween Haunted Destination Guide category and the Halloween Haunted Tour, uh, see our blog uh, at this address. You'll find out all the information. And we will be getting into that, Teresa. I'm assuming you've already submitted that last name suggestion, right, Adam? It's already on the list. <laughs> All right, just making sure. It's not too bad of a suggestion, to be honest. I actually have a question. Um, Go for it. Yeah, on, on mainland, when does something stop being okay and become harassment or um, sp visual spam? Is there uh, some type of criteria on that? Um, I would say if you find it intolerable, that might be worth uh, submitting an abuse report in World 4. Uh, to do that, you would go to help report abuse. Um, there's not a certain threshold. It, it's more of if you find it annoying, someone else might, and then the next person might, um, and it's probably credible enough that um, we can have governance uh, review the report. Uh, we can't say what would happen uh, once the report is submitted, but we definitely um, recommend if you find it a nuisance or you can that they, um, put it in there for the uh, causing mischief, uh, go ahead and file the report. Um, the worst case, it, it gets reviewed. 
Right. It definitely is uh, of subjective area, but definitely go ahead and uh, submit it, like Vic said, because we've got to let the governance team take a look at it. No worries, Teresa. That could have very easily been my golden retriever. <laughs> Fortunately, my dogs are sleeping right now. Hi, are you open for, uh, is the flow open? It is always open from the get-go. Okay, um, aloha. I am here with some members of Anarchy Radio, which is, which is a uh, leftist LGBTQIA2 plus community that spans over multiple regions on the mainland here in Second Life, and I have been asked to speak on behalf of our community to you at this meeting. Uh, first, I just want to say, despite all its flaws, Second Life is a one-of-a-kind platform that we genuinely care about and wish to see continue to exist and succeed, a sentiment I hope all of us can share. But as of late, our community and others that cater to marginalized groups have been targeted by a gang of bigots looking to drive us to close our doors out of fear of them increasing the severity of their attacks against our communities. We try filing abuse reports and filing tickets with as much information as we can provide, but these bad actors continue to be allowed to be on Second Life even though their behavior is very much criminal, never mind violating the terms of service. We just want to exist in peace like everyone else, and I strongly suggest that the abuse report process be looked at and revised, because as it is right now, it is not working. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I appreciate your time. Sam, quick question on that. Um, can you give me an idea of you yourself on this issue, how many abuse reports you've submitted and over what period of time? Just to give me a ballpark idea. I've honestly have lost count at this point. It, it's, it's, it's a persistent issue where one bad actor will come in, we ban them, they come back on an alt and escalate the behavior to the point where it is frankly criminal in some cases. Gotcha. Um, definitely continue with those abuse reports. Um, you said that you're also submitting tickets, I'm assuming, for assistance on securing your area? Correct. Okay. Um, do you have any current ticket that's in process? No. Um, as of late, it's been quiet for the past week, but we're aware that some of the behavior that they're exhibiting, uh, for example, they have begin, begun to try and dox members of our community. No, I do not have a ticket open at this exact moment in time. Okay, just wanted to double check. One thing that I've definitely seen have an effect, it doesn't solve your problem, obviously, um, but turning on, you know, the needing premium membership or having payment information on file or whatnot for periods of time will get them to go elsewhere, but that doesn't really solve the problem. It's more of a short-term uh, uh, solution. But, yeah, definitely file the abuse report in, um, with as much information as you possibly can uh, to go ahead and let the governance team know. Um, unfortunately, while we do have somebody from governance here paying attention and they're responding right now, um, that's about as far as land and concierge can uh, get involved with that. And just to add to that, yeah, I would uh, keep an eye on what governance for is discussing right now. That will probably give you some, some help. While I understand that you do review every abuse report that comes to you, it's a black box. We have no way to confirm that. Like, we literally just have to go off your, your word. There is nothing there guaranteeing that someone is actually reading our, our abuse reports and acting on them in good faith. I'm not saying you're acting in bad faith, mind you. I'm just saying that that's how it feels for people who – I could give you a list of names and groups – and these people are still in Second Life, crashing sims, doxing people, and threatening to kill us in real life.
Like, we're, we're not asking for much. We're just asking for some modicum of transparency when it comes to abu the, abu uh, the abuse report process. Because as it stands right now, it's a black box where there's no, there's nothing holding anyone accountable. Accountable. Actually, I have a sort of follow-on question. Assuming that somebody does file an abuse report, is who filed it ever uh, an action is taken? Is who filed it ever revealed to the person that action is taken against? No. And the reason yeah, I ask, not. the reason I ask is because if somebody's having a conflict and then somebody else files an abuse report, they uh, they could assume it's the person who did who didn't do it and, and retaliate against them. So I'm just a little concerned about that part of the process too. Again, we we as far as concierge and land can't speak to governance issues. Governance four is here. Maybe they'll say something on it, but but we can't. It's actually not. The governance is a separate team from us. You're right. Sorry. There is no governance meeting, though, is the problem. We have no way to directly talk to governance, except if we're lucky and they are at this meeting. fine as governance is catching up i can tell you that back when i worked uh, on abuse reports and whatnot we definitely were able to go ahead and use you know this is a repeat offender uh this person previously was doing this under account a b c d you know and stuff like that we have some that i've quit even they have so many accounts that I could even ARing. They they automatically think their account is gone, so they don't even try that old account anymore. So I, I just quit abuse reporting. I'm just I just am as tired. I'm just tired. It's been going on four years. I'm just tired. They've won. Like, I know you guys are doing your best. Like, that's all we can ever ask of you guys. But as it stands, we're kind of just left to fucking drift in the wind when these sorts of things happen. When concerted efforts happen where these bad actors show up in groups with alts and alts and alts, there's so much we can do. There's not much, not much we can do. Sorry.
Yes, Mike. Um, so for that, what we'd like to do is kind of see what settings you have uh, for the region that are preventing you, because it could be a number of things that we take a look at. Um, so when you can, I say reach out directly to support, and then uh, we can see what's going on. Uh, if it's happening in one region or many, uh, it might be that a uh, parcel or parcels or the parcel encompassing the entire region is deeded to a group. And if you're not part of the group, um, you're going to be locked out of uh, a lot of the uh, functions there. So that's something that we can definitely take a look at, see how the region is uh, currently set up and let you know how to uh, adjust it. Absolutely, and thanks for the questions. Governor Site 4, I agree with you. Um, definitely filing the abuse reports for the issues, uh, filing the um, uh, feature requests or bug reports for issues with the system itself uh, definitely are the ways to go. But I do think that we should probably move forward. Not that I'm in any way, shape, or form saying that this isn't an issue, but it's just that there are a lot of people that are in this uh, meeting right now that are here for the purpose of the meeting. I hate to be the bad guy. Um, the reason why I didn't try and stop this earlier is I wanted to at least, you know, get some feedback uh, from Governance 4 to help you, Sam, and the others out. But we do need to move on with the actual uh, purpose of the meeting for those that came here for that purpose. So please don't be uh, upset that I'm moving forward. It's not that I don't value what you're saying or think that it's important, but I do have to start addressing the people that came here for the purpose of the meeting. Thank you, Izzy. Yeah, we do have a few more topics we want to get out there for those who came here. And one of them is regards to land pricing. Now, last Friday, Gumperty and Patch appeared on LabGab. And while we had a lot of very exciting discussions, we know that the one more folks here might want to hear about is some of the upcoming land changes that were teased. Fortunately, while we don't have a lot of details as yet to provide, we do know that there will be a lower priced premium option in the future to allow for mainland purchasing, as well as a review of costs associated with mainland ownership. So we're going to have more information in the coming months. And as soon as we have it, uh, that will be put on our featured blog that I know everyone here is following, right? Right. Mari, you would not believe how many different names we've heard uh, as uh, possibilities for that. Okay, I put the link if you're not following. That is where we put all of our news. Definitely uh, follow it on the top right, excuse me, is the module where you can determine how you would like to receive your updates. Um, all sorts of new information is put there. Not sure about additional tools, Darksider. Um, we can go and send that if there's going to be uh, any mention of maybe new or currently adjusted tools. Uh, we haven't heard of that yet, though.
Wendy, I think there was something about homesteads we were going to talk yeah, about. Well. Yeah, I'll touch on that. I see that for Kofi's discussing some of it too. Uh, we are, yeah, we're looking at allowing Premium Plus members to own homestead regions without holding a full region. That's uh, planned for the beginning of next month, which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, you know, again, keep an eye on the blog for specifics on when that comes up. Um, hey, indeed, Karen. Um, and uh, Prokofi, yeah, there, there are things being put in place to try to uh, avoid that. Because, uh, yeah, we remember Jack and that. Um, and again, you can uh, also look at the LabGab episode where... Uh, Patch and Grumpy discussed this, as well as, of course, the you know, blog was mentioned. Uh, that's all on our channel here. And to add, uh, Lucy, in case it wasn't already mentioned, um, you will only be allowed to own one homestead. So um, land barons will still have the advantage of being able to purchase more than one. Um, this will just be an additional perk for premium plus uh, residents. Um, we're working to coalesce so everyone can enjoy the land and um, yeah, it will be reviewed. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Not yet, Lucia. On the fees. As far as I know, Prokofi. Right, kiss my. Um, if you're already managing full regions, um, the thought of ch changing to a homestead is probably not a good idea because the full region, um, basically, it's the ultimate sandbox. While the same square meterage is there for the homestead, there are um, definite restrictions, both in how many residents can visit the region, how many prims you can put down. Um, so, yeah, if you're already uh, in full regions, um, owning homesteads in addition to those is still a, a huge boon. But yeah, transferring down, that would be problematic, especially if you already have a, a lot of prims in those fulls. Teresa, what do you mean by shaped different? I think she means like a, if we have the ability to give them the raw files for the original uh, templates. Yeah. Um... My island is just totally flat, and I'd like to have more of a terrainy one with mountains and stuff in it that I see offered for new regions. But I've owned my region for, what, 10 years or something now? Honestly, Teresa, while you can uh, talk to concierge about the possibility of getting a raw file for one of the template regions, but if you go on the marketplace, there's a lot of great raw files that you can get from there. So I went ahead and put in a link, as Izzy mentioned, this is the basic shape that's available for everyone, but uh, they're very basic. They're starter shapes, kind of just uh, get the ball rolling. Um, you'll find a ton of uh, uh, pre-created, uh, as Izzy also mentioned, on the marketplace uh, shapes everywhere, like from skulls to to beautiful designs to more you know, you know intricate island shapes. Um, but if you just want to just make a quick change, 
um, you can go ahead and uh, click and download any of those. And within minutes, um, the terrain will, uh, will change for you. It's something that uh, you can do as often as you want, as many times as you want. And um, if you haven't, you know, feel free to uh, use the terrain tool. If you need help in uh, doing that, reach out to us. We're more than happy to come by and uh, give you a quick, uh, quick tour and guide and how it works. And a word of warning also, if you uh, change your raw file and you already have uh, a number of objects down in your region, um, depending on how much you reshape the land, objects could end up below your limits um, and could potentially be returned. So be a little cautious with that. Yes, baking is your friend if you are uh, playing around with raw with a uh, terrain. Agreed, Naga Chief. Uh, the terrain tool can get uh, take some getting used to uh, by by changing the strength of the tool. That can uh, adjust how just how much around the area you want to uh, change. So you can basically go at it with a scalpel or you know a wide brush. Um, but typically you start to find uh, combinations that work where you can make a cut or a curve and there's not much uh, residual effect around from where you're working. It, it, it can be cheap. And don't forget that you can always if you're the region owner, download your raw file uh, when you've got it at a point that you like, but you still want to do some more work. That way, if you do something uh, and you mess it up past the point where reverting is going to help you, you can always re-upload that previous raw file. And some of you will harken back to the day where terraforming was done by grenade. That'd be the strength, Karen. <laughs> like how big you can also change the uh, the size of the brush. Um, so not just the strength of it, but you can also change the size. I'm wondering if you were changing. Uh, um, were you also crossing? Uh, do you have multiple regions? We kind of swiped over it, and maybe you uh, made a change over there. That could also have. I've seen it happen. Not often. Rochelle, not as yet, but that might be a suggestion to make. I'm thinking of more of an estate owner for a private region, and you become the alt payor. Oh, estate owner, alt payor situation? Yeah, true. Yeah, because that would uh, we have that available right now. Uh, you'd still be financially responsible for the region. Uh, it would still be up to you to make any services like uh, region renames or moves. And you know, you're, since you're still uh, paying for the region, um, you get, would decide to take it down, remove. But uh, you can assign someone as an enrolled estate owner, and they have a full range of uh, abilities as you normally would. Yes, but as Prokofi alluded to uh, there, if you do use any of those uh, landscaper scripted objects, please, please, please remember to pick them up when you're done because they inevitably get accidentally turn back on from a region restart or something like that and then go crazy they are the bane of my existence is he You can definitely bring up uh, requests uh, in here, Darksider, but we're going to go, oh, that's a really cool idea, but we still need you to go ahead and fill out uh, that JIRA for the feature request. But by all means, bring them up because we might know something that's already there that does it. 
Absolutely true. So we're about halfway through and we have a few more topics we want to bring to you guys' attention. The next one involves a piece of news I'm sure everyone here uh, is well aware of now. And that's the news regarding JP Morgan's investment in our payment platform, Tilia. Tilia was initially built uh, and continues to support the Second Life economy, uh, but they are uh, making a name for themselves and caught the attention of uh, JP Morgan. So while I think it's worthwhile to note that this doesn't directly affect us at Second Life in lots of important ways, JP Morgan will not have access to any user data in Second Life. So for example, there's no change in how we work with Tilia or vice versa. This could, however, potentially lead to some enhanced ways we handle payment and process credit options, though there are no concrete plans in that place in the moment. So at any rate, if you'd like to learn more about that, I recommend checking out the release form uh, Tilia we posted here. It's also on the featured news blog, which I just enjoy talking about any chance I get. <laughs> Zanzibar, um, while I can't say anything that we're particularly working on or predict or anything like that, I will say that this uh, having Tilia working with JP Morgan definitely means that we've got a broader scope and we'll have an easier time adding those kinds of features. So I would not hold your, I wouldn't hold your breath, but I would say that you could probably not have to look so far on the horizon. Yeah, no change to that property. <laughs> it's all bridges. You just fly around him, right? <laughs> it's second life. <laughs> Yeah, but pretty soon we're going to put those cameras in to just scan them as they're going in anywhere within a near, nearby area. That reminds me of an old movie, Blazing Saddles, a uh, bunch of cowboys in the desert, and they just come up into a toll, uh, toll crossing, but it's like maybe 10 foot wide. <laughs> you just see vast expanse of desert around it, and they don't know which way to go. <laughs> See, and for me, it reminds me of the first episode of, I think it was called Sequest, where the captain of the submarine uh, is riding his motorcycle and this little uh, scanner pops up and, and all of a sudden he hears inside his headset of his helmet that uh, X amount of dollars has been deducted from his uh, uh, account for speeding. It's true, Karen. That was uh, back before we had uh, direct teleporting like we do today. Uh, everyone had to land at the info hub and uh, fly from there or get a transport from there or pay. And yeah, paid resing, paid by the object. Trim tax. Little, yep. A little bit higher cost if you weren't resing it on the ground, if you're resing it at altitude. I can hear the joy of the memory, gone. <laughs> Those were quite the days, quite the days, walking uphill to the info hub both ways. In the snow? In the in the particle snow. <laughs> <laughs> you had holes in your system shoes. I want to bring up another thing. This is also a premium plus perk uh, right now uh, with the uh, Speedlight mobile app, which is a third party uh, viewer. They're now offering uh, no online time limitations, as well as prioritized online support through there for Speedlight. Uh, it's a nice little perk for those who might need to get into Second Life while on the go. Uh, again, I do want to stress that uh, 
while this is a pre uh, benefit for Premium Plus, it's not uh, anything more than an agreement between us and, and Speedlight. It's not uh, part of our own mobile efforts. Um, those remain. Um, and uh, we should have some more news on that probably early 2023. I know that Adam Burp likes to hear uh, about current things on uh, mobile. So there is work being done. Uh, and this is just a separate perk. Well, Dark Sider, I do know uh, one uh, private island owner that used to keep a statue of my avatar uh, in her region to keep uh, the lag from getting too severe. And that's a true story. That is a good question, Mar. I can see both sides, although I'm not uh, I'm not aware of any plans to uh, convert any existing land. Not at the moment, but I do know that we've been decently looking at uh, the abandoned land and the mainland in general for uh, ways of improvement. So you should be hearing some things about that soon. Ooh. You got it, Dark Cider. <laughs> And fine, I didn't put out or give the uh, avatar. She just took a snapshot of me and then made her own. <laughs> and this is after three or four times of her having performance issues, me coming out to the region, and all of a sudden her region was working just fine, as it does. Yeah, Karen, I think uh, Second Life was always meant to be on on the, uh, the desktop. Um, having a mobile, though, does give you advantages if you're kind of just trying to keep up with things. Um, it, it is limited, uh, but it does give you some access uh, where you can at least maintain a presence in some aspects. Yeah, I am pushing, pushing, pushing for a chat only and an inventory maintenance of, of version of a mobile. Dark Sider, you don't want the land team responsible for decorating the uh, abandoned land. Thanks for the link, Adam. And Prokofi, you know how I feel about that. I have the horrible trees that we're currently using out there. Now, I had one thing to share. Um, it recently came up. It was a uh, podcast that was done with the Wall Street Journal, and I thought it was an amazing listen. It's broken into four parts. Um, if you haven't listened to it yet, and there's also a transcript um, if you're not able to uh, listen or you just kind of want to read at your leisure, but I thought it was a very uh, well thought out and comprehensive uh, discussion about the metaverse and, and also involving Second Life. Yes, I really, really enjoyed watching that. Thanks for bringing it up, Vic. No, we already haven't beat. No contest. <laughs> Haven't a leg to stand on. Ooh. Yeah, I, 
I, I may eat the <laughs> nice one, Wendy. I may eat my words at some point, but the thing is, is none of the people that are coming out with stuff are anywhere as near as open about uh, what the users can create. And until they wrap their mind around creation as the primary focus, they're never going to compete. Uh, emojis, I guess, are just ASCII characters for us. We're old school. <laughs> if that's not a feature request, uh, it should be. Uh, we have teams that uh, review um, new ideas. Um, they probably would complicate uh, a couple systems, especially since uh, we already have so much trouble with ASCII characters uh, introducing pumpkins and, and pirates. It, it might, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of get the picture from that movie in and out where the little postman goes, uh, please remember to use your full uh, zip code. My thing is, please stop using Unicode. <laughs> Pumpkins and pirates, that's really all that circles in my head back and forth that's it pretty much all day Oh, yes, Orange, I definitely have. And I can just picture another generation or two and people are just going to have flashcards that they're going to um, hold up an emoji because already my nieces and nephews um, go BRB and lots of other uh, acronyms rather than talk. Thanks for bringing that uh, Jira up. I'll take a look at that actually. See if I can get some some movement on that. Yes, and how many of you are in a chat like this one uh, uh, on or in a region or whatever and are trying to find a like button for somebody's comment uh, in the Second Life chat room? That is plenty petite chat. <laughs> We're serious people. <laughs> We have about another 15 minutes left. Uh, if you have any burning questions, drop it in chat or uh, uh, open your microphone. Go for it, Vanilla.
It's a good question, Prokofi. I'm going to poke on that one as well because I know that uh, that's a personal frustration. I know we've discussed it internally, so I'm going to keep poking on that. Darksider, not that I've heard as of yet, um, because I know of a few products that are going to affect existing ones rather than uh, new ones. Doesn't mean that there isn't somebody that's working on it that I just don't know about, but not that I've heard of yet. Very true, uh, Lucia. Whitney sees all. Yes, very little gets past Whitney. Mar, without actually seeing numbers, um, I could say from personal experience, I see more active engagement now than last year and then the year before. And I also see, you know, the same names and more names going with those same names. So from my perspective, it feels like the community is building and it has more of like a grassroots. So it has a core and then that core is expanding.
I think it was mentioned before, Naga Chief, um, how to uh, dress up areas might, that might be a little barren. Um, one of the suggestions, and it's a good one, is introducing um, kind of uh, like physical um, landmarks like a community center, um, baseball field, you know, gathering areas, maybe a, a, a bar, saloon, uh, something where there's kind of a landmark where people can start at and then uh, bridge out towards. Yeah, not landing hubs, but more of uh, uh, meetups. <laughs> meet meet ups. <laughs> I like that meet hubs. You didn't say that last month, Adam. I think we have you quoted here somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. So Adam said, I can't wait to decorate my new linen home in Belisaria. Quote, unquote, Adam. <laughs> I'm kidding. And if a Linden said it. we got about five minutes left if there's any last comments or questions. Oh, near you. And I've got a lot of bears, so that's scary. Dark Sider, I don't have any knowledge of uh, tier changes um, at this point in time in any direction. Um, so I don't know of any changes that are uh, upcoming. Um, but as we learn, we will definitely uh, keep you guys updated. Yeah, only add to that. Patch did... Uh... Uh, discussed changes coming up in the uh, lab gab recently, but uh, he didn't provide a lot of details, and we also don't have any of those details that he didn't provide, unfortunately. So we don't have anything we can share on that. Wish we did. We'll find out soon. We'll find out with you. So on to the more serious question, who's going trick-or-treating this year? Raises my hand. <laughs> I'm actually going to be traveling during Halloween, so yay fun me.
Yeah, I take the kids trick or treating, but I don't eat the candy anymore. Because I've seen what dentist bills look like. <laughs> There's nothing scary. I'm sorry to hear that, Prof. Yeah, I hope she gets better. Yeah, same. So sorry, Prokofi. Izzy might be able to shed more light on it, but I haven't heard any news on the uh, Memorial Garden kiss mic. Yeah, I, I can talk to that briefly. Uh, there is work uh, being looked at behind the scenes, but there's nothing that I can share at this time that's specific on it, but it does progress. I was going to pretty much say the same thing. I've heard a lot of uh, um, feedback about it uh, as a work in progress, but nothing about uh, a release yet. Orange, one issue with that is you have to also balance what you get uh, with um, uh, the subjective side. On, well, pretty much what uh, Lucy is saying right now. Um, and also, once you get into a certain tier amount, that extra 1024 that you're getting for being premium plus isn't really having much of a factor. Uh, so it is more the perks used. So it really depends on what tier level you're at as to whether you're just strictly saving money. Ah, true. I wasn't even thinking about the uploads and such. Well, everybody, I have to run, and I'm not going to be here next week. So everybody have an absolutely amazing Halloween. Safe travels, Izzy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who who decided that I was going north during the uh, almost winter? That was TJ. Oh, yeah, that was me, right? <laughs> I think that's our time as well, guys. Yep. Thank you, everyone, okay, for attending, and we'll see you next month. Have a great uh, rest of uh, the month, and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy Halloween. Here, here.